10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, This is Diane Andrews in black and white. The issues you don't want to talk about. The arts and entertainment you need to know. And now here's your host, Diane Andrews. Hello. I'm Diane Andrews, your host of Diane Andrews in Black and White. First, I want to wish you a happy 2016. I've been off on season break, but while I was doing that, I was thinking of some great shows to bring you out there in YouTube land. We're the largest show in the state. We're a statewide show, and I really appreciate your viewership. So what I wanted to bring to you today is something all about kids. But before I do that, you'll see a picture on the screen of Dr. Martin Luther King. I would be very remiss if I didn't mention the great Dr. King and what he did for us, for America, and for the world. If you're too young to remember Dr. King, I'd ask you to Google him because he was a great and courageous man who changed the face of history. Today I have four guests with me, two adults and two high school students. To my left is Gazelle Harrison. Gazelle is a person who works with children. She has two degrees, a bachelor's uh, in, in, uh, from Southern University in child development, and she also has a master's from Southern University in sociology. She's a screenwriter, and she's written two books. She's an author, and, but today we're gonna talk about her work with CASA and her work in, with children and development of children. We want to keynote some of those programs because that's what this show is about. But one thing I do want to mention, she's doing a celebration of women on March 6th in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm one of the sponsors and I'm one of the speakers, so I'd ask all my audience to please Google that and find out and come down and visit with, with her and us the week in March 6th. To my right, I have Charmaine Parker Lewis, who is an award-winning screenplay writer. She's written from, mu done music videos. She's written one, one page scripts. She's written large scripts. She did something to change her life in 2006. She worked for United Parcel Service. She was happy. She had a good job. She had a stable life. But when something tells you to follow your passion, and when God is sending you a message of something that you should do, you better follow it. And that's what she's done. And again, since then, she's award-winning journalist. These, both these ladies are in the education system. She works in uh, New Iberia, in Iberia Parish. She has two high school students with her today that she's going to introduce that work in the Fearless Generation filmmaker with her. They're making a, a, a play. We're doing a play, Bayou Renaissance, where I think I'm supposed to play the diva. Yes, is that a diva witch or is that a diva nice woman? Uh, it depends. Okay. <laughs> okay. Depends. All right. I can go out of my character and be right. a diva witch if you right. want me to, but uh, I try to be a diva nice. Right. Okay. Let's introduce these two. The, the reason we're here. Let's talk about these two high school students. You all go to Westgate, right, yes, Jonathan? Yes. Okay. I'm going to let you introduce them and what they do. Okay. So to my right is Caitlin Absent. She's a freshman at Westgate High School. Mm -hmm. She's 15 years old. Caitlin is very talented. She's I a, see one thing she does. Yeah, <laughs> she is a musician. She's, this is not the only instrument she plays. Yeah. Um, she's also an actress. Oh, okay. So that's something we're working on. Um, Christopher Douglas, across from me, he's 18. <laughs> So uh -huh. I have to go down the list with Christopher. Christopher uh -huh. is an actor. Christopher is I knew a, um, Christopher was an yeah. actor because he keeps looking in the, uh, yeah. in the camera right. and changing his expression. <laughs> and I asked him before the show started, are you an actor? And he said, yes, you can yeah. tell he's an actor. And what else are you go, go um, down the list? I do spoken word, I sing, I dance. Um, I step, uh, like if you ever seen Stump the Art, uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. yes, I yeah. step. Uh -huh. um, trying to learn how to play keyboard. Did you always want to be in this media, in this industry? No. Actually, when I was little, I really wanted to be a marine biologist. Really? But um, mm -hmm. came sixth grade uh, when I joined my drama club uh, in Morgan City. I was like, I was really, really good at acting. And my drama sponsor saw something in me. She yeah. was like, I don't know. This you can do this. Just got yeah, it. you got <laughs> it. You got it, whatever it is, right? OK, Caitlin, tell us about your short journey. I've been playing music since, like, I can remember, like... By, by hearing, by ear, or by... I learned by ear, and yeah. then in, like, fourth, 
to fifth grade, I started like learning from a teacher. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, I should stick with this. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't even know how many I could count. Like, it's a lot. How many instruments? You can't count? Over nine. <laughs> oh my God, that is yeah. wonderful. That's a God-given gift, and then you're nurturing the talent. <laughs> right. One thing I wanted to say, there's 78 million uh, children in America today. 20% of children in America go to bed hungry. Mm. They don't have enough food to eat in this great country of the United States of America. In fact, I did a show on homeless. And all my shows go to YouTube for you people if you want to check back to some of the other, some of the other shows I've done. But out of that 78 million, America's about 375 million people. Out of the 78 million children that we have in the world today, 54% grow up in what they call a non-traditional environment. Only 46% grow up with heterogeneous parents, which means different sex. Some kids are in the foster system, which in America now has 415,000 children in the foster system. So needless to say, we've got a lot of work to do in America to try to help our children, and that's why I started this series. I do put my shows in series out on YouTube where you, if you want to see everything on ISIS, if you want to see Black, White, Blue Lives Matter, if you want to see How to Beat Addictions, it may be three or four shows or more in that series. This is a new series I started. Uh, last year, at the end of the year, I started the Entrepreneur series but this year I wanted to do something all about kids so you're gonna see more shows coming in and coming up on all about children mm -hmm. so tell us what you did at CASA Wow I tell you uh, my experience with CASA was amazing mm -hmm. um, I uh, had court appointed a court special a, advocate right court appointed special advocate uh, and what I was is I was a voice for the children mm -hmm. you go in and I spoke in behalf of what is in the best interest of the child. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the great. How did you determine what was the best interest? Well, there was a certain segment of time that I would spend mm -hmm. uh, with the child, uh, spending time with the child's parent, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the foster parent that the Can child. Can you give was me in. a percentage, Gazelle, of how many of those children had two parents that were interested in them in the home? Well, very, very, very low percentage. Because 60% of all black children grow up with only one parent, and it's usually the mother growing up in a matriotic society. That is very, very true. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I found once I got into uh, working with Costa was that I think the most painful <clears throat> part about it was that often the abuse and the, the neglect that the children were yeah. facing came from their own parents. Right. And so I often... Again, 65% of children end up in domestic violence and sexual abuse, yeah. That's especially right. girls. That's yeah. right. Very, very true. And so the amazing part of, about it, and I would often speak of this, is when you can't depend on your own parent yeah. to be a voice for you yeah. is really, really tough. And so, uh, and I think that was the driving force that led me to go in and work with the parents, work with the kids, mm -hmm. as well as the foster parents. And it was a really, really tough uh, battle because in some instances, the parent did want the child back, yeah. but the circumstances of the home would not allow that to happen. And as time go on, you begin to develop a, a relationship with the parent, right. the foster uh, parent, but at the same token, my mission and goal was the child, right. first and foremost. Right. And that's Sometimes it gets office. a little blurred lines it does. as uh, it does. thick things. Exactly, lines, yeah. exactly. And, uh, you know, to, to you know, write up a case to say that, you know what, <clears throat> uh, in, in my eyesight, the child would not be in the best, it would not be in the best interest for the child to go back with the parent. It's a mm -hmm. hard, hard thing mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, that's what CASA and every family wants is for that mm -hmm. child to be in that home. Mm -hmm. But if it's not in the best interest, it's just not. What about the foster system? And then I'm going to come over to you, Charmaine. I was, in fact, I was uh, with uh, my Terminix guy yesterday and he was uh, talking about uh, some black people who flew to China to adopt some Chinese babies, how hard it is to adopt. And we also were talking about, he had some friends who were in uh, the foster system mm -hmm. and they wanted to adopt the child and they wouldn't, it was so difficult for them to adopt after they've had this child a year. Exactly. Why does, does the court, why does the system make it so difficult if they love this child, they treat this child well and they snatch them out of someone who wants them, puts them back in foster care? Exactly. Isn't that the way it works? That's, it seems and, and, like. and, and that is, it seems to be the case. I think one of the things that we have to get past mm -hmm. is uh, coming to the understanding of feeling that uh, uh, individuals of the same race have to be in the same That's race. Right. That's why I mentioned the black exactly. people who flew to China exactly. to adopt exactly. uh, last month. And I have to say that I was guilty of that at one particular time. Yeah. I felt that, you know, uh, you remember the movie with Holly Berry and Jessica Lange? Mm -hmm. Losing Isaiah, I think. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and, and that was a, a, a showing of a black person. Holly exactly. Berry was a drug addict in right. this movie. Right. Yeah. And Jessica Lange had 
fostered her child and Jessica exactly. adopt, well, adopted the child. Well, exactly. adopted. And then Holly did one good thing. She did clean herself up and got her child back. That's right. That's right. And, and that's a wonderful thing if that's the case. And that was the same case that I had yeah. with my last Casa case. And I had to make the decision because this little boy, who was an African-American little boy, uh -huh. was in the home uh, of, with uh, Caucasians. And uh -huh. it was an absolutely phenomenal uh, situation for, for the him. child yeah. because they were just he was thriving and doing one and you know blacks I see a lot of us blacks will say oh they shouldn't be adopted by black sh kids should not be adopted by another race but as blacks we adopt less children in our race That's than true. other people do we don't do a lot of adoptions That's black to true. black adoptions that is so we need yep. we can't complain if we're not doing anything to help the system mm -hmm. right. okay Charmaine let's come on over to you and let's talk <laughs> about what you're doing because Charmaine ended up with a grant to right. help these children in Iberia Parish and she's a teacher again at uh, Westgate. So how, at, no, you're a teacher at, at St. Charles. St. Charles. So yeah. you're not at their school. No. So they're just a part of the, the Fearless Generation uh, filmmakers, exactly. which you have 12, 12 you told me. Yes, ma'am. So it, what, what city is your school in? My school is in Generet, oh, uh, Louisiana, Generet. but okay. it's still in Iberia. Pass. It is still. Yeah. Yeah. And this grant, uh, you did tell me it's from Lafayette, right. and that grant is only for Iberia Parish? Exactly. Tell me what the grant is and what you're doing with it. OK, so the grants. <laughs> It's to um, fund a film program, that's it. When you make films, when it comes to movies, you need every element. That's writing, that's um, camera, that's sound, yeah, that's even music. Play myself, right. written two books. Yeah. And yeah. you mm -hmm. need music to make a movie. So I can have yeah. a script, words, I can have my actors, but if there's no music to go with it, then it means right. it doesn't move the movie. Right. So that's why, you know what, we're going to do a, um, a film program, and we're going to put every talent that we have in New Iberia in this in this that program wants to be a part that want want to be a part of it. So Let not me only ask you this, do you both come from two parent households? Oh uh, no, uh, no. We the one. I come with one. Your mother? Oh, I did you live with your grandmother? <laughs> yeah. You live with your grandmother. I live with my mother. You live with your mother. I guess I'm. Uh, I I don't live with my mother anymore. My father? Right now. No, I I live with my other mother. I I have I have family all over. Like but your to, birth mother, you don't right, live I don't with, live nor with your birth, birth father. No. That goes back to the statistics. Excuse me, y'all. I just got up with a flu. Yeah. <coughs> uh, that goes back to the statistics I was just talking about in uh, black families. Mm -hmm. the, usually the mother is the one raising mm -hmm. the child. And that's a real problem in America. Mm -hmm. So do you feel, does that make you want to do this more? Because I've heard actors say, when you can't live in, sometimes it's good to be able to escape to another world. Mm -hmm. Does your music help you feel better about yourself and help you escape? Does your acting do that for you? My, yes, Christian? every every talent that I do helps me to move over into another world. But then again, still at the same time, you know, it's just I got support from so many other different people. So I don't, He's blessed. I don't yeah, really need, you know, blessed. just my my birth mother. I don't yeah. really just need her. I have everybody that need and want. Are two different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. Let's hear a little more, Charmaine, about it. I'm going to let you play a little bit. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, the thing about New Iberia, um, and the reason why I wanted to start a film program, in th that particular town, I don't know of any, I haven't heard of any programs to um, give them exposure to the arts. It's there's, a wonderful thing. There's nothing mm -hmm. down, not even in the schools, unless you're in a gifted program. Right. There's nothing for them. And there's so many talented kids. Um, and you'll see that in the program. Yeah. But this is something just to nurture them, something that God has already given them. Right. And we're just nurturing them. But that's them what you it. have to do. God yeah. gives us many talents. Right. And we have to feed them and right. water them, nourish right. them for them to be what they're really supposed to be. Right. You came to do what God wanted you to do. Exactly. I'm stepping out doing what God wanted me to do. You're doing what God wanted exactly. you to do. And our passions are writing and, yeah. and speaking and me also doing a television yeah. show. Mm -hmm. We're going to be right back. Come on back so you can hear Caitlin play this instrument <laughs> over here to Diane Andrews in black and white. Thank you very much for coming back, and thank you out there in the audience for being with us. I promise you that you're going to hear Caitlin uh, play her instrument, and then we're going to do a spoken word with Christopher after uh, she plays. And if my, I have a, a frog in my throat, I just got over the flu. I keep uh, I told you, so if I sound crazy, I'm sorry. Okay, let's let, come on, Caitlin. Let's let you uh, okay. play a little bit. <laughs> That's beautiful. 
Well, you, you can tell what it was, right? Yeah. You can tell what it was. Yeah, Whitney Houston, yeah. Was that 30 seconds? It weren't so quick. Okay. <laughs> um, and you started, you were able to, I love saxophone. Mm -hmm. You were able to play it and you, then you perfected it. You know, I have some friend, a friend of mine that speaks nine languages. Oh, wow. wow. He can hear it and he can speak it. Wow. I just can do English. I, I mean, that is such a gift <laughs> that is, to yes, be able is. to do that. That's and it's something similar with people with music. A lot of people have that music ear, mm -hmm. the musician's ear. Yeah. Okay, yeah. come on. Come uh, on with it. You stand up. Uh. <laughs> Uh, this is called uh, It Don't Faze Me, okay. and it goes, You say that I'm off, I have no swag, and I'm lame when, to be honest, we walk, talk, and dress just the same. Mm -hmm. So move around with your hate, and in your breath you can save me, mm -hmm. because you speak no truth, the and the uh, truth doesn't even faze me. I ain't Kevin Hart, so don't <laughs> laugh at my pain. You could say it with your chest, but it'll sound just the same how I'm a nine factor or a lame or even a midget nerd. But I can guarantee you any day that a midget can be heard. That's just a little bit of it. Did you write that? Oh, yes, oh, I know. oh my God. That's yeah. Beautiful. I wrote that when I was nice. their talent. I wrote that poem when I was 15. Yeah. You wrote that when How old are you now? I'm 18. And you're? 15. You're 15. I knew one of y'all was 15. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So uh, tell us about, have they done one film or Bio Renaissance will be your first okay. film with, the, with this so, group? So Bio Renaissance will be our very first production mm -hmm. as um, filmmakers. Um, that's me, me taking, thinking about Harlem Renaissance. We have a date for that so we March, can tell people? March 26th is the date. Um, How can they find out? Will you have a website? <laughs> March 26th, um, the website is in progress. Okay. It will be up soon. Um, we do have a Facebook page, uh, Fearless Generation Filmmakers, that people can go to, okay. and that information will be on there. But March 26, 3 o'clock, Westgate High in New Iberia, Louisiana. So we have um, Bailey. How much are your tickets? The tickets are $5. If you go online, they're 7 I think we all can afford yeah. that, and wow. from yeah. just That's a representative yeah. of these yeah. two, right. I think it's going to be a great, and I'm going to be there. Yeah. So you can <laughs> see me be the diva. And, uh, <laughs> am I mentioning some names real quick? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, um, just in, we have other other um, kids here, and I just want to mention their names: Curtis Brown III, Austin Bonin, um, Bailey Broussard. That's my best friend. Um, <laughs> but they're all talented singers, actors. Okay. Well, <laughs> as you can see, some of the talent. I wanted you at all to see the children that we'll be presenting right. uh, in March, uh, playing in, yeah, in this, in this March play. 26. And I'm looking happy to working with you all. Yeah, mm -hmm. it will be fun. Oh, Miss yeah. Irene Simon. I'm so sorry, Miss Irene. I forgot. I'm so sorry. Where's Irene Simon? Miss Irene. Or Ms. Irene. If she doesn't have to, we don't have time now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Gazelle, tell us some more things that, that you've done also. And um, um, Oh, is this Ms. Simon? Yeah, sorry, Ms. Simon. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, basically, and let me just say this right here, uh, and we're also having an event, which right. you're uh, I mentioned in. it when I came in, March exactly, 6th. Exactly, right, March right. 6th, whatever. Celebration of women. A celebration of women, whatever. Which Where is that? It's going to be at the Belle of Baton Rouge right. um, uh, Augusty, um, uh Hotel, and yeah. so it'll be there March 6th uh, from 11 till uh, 3. But a lot of... Uh, Areas that I have worked in, uh, I'm children. I'm yeah, I wanted you to think of some that really make an impact or some that you don't make an impact and why are we wasting governmental money on them? Well, let me <laughs> say this right here. One of the areas that I worked in when it came to uh, youth and children, and let me just say this right here about these two students that I sit here uh, in front of us. Uh, I applaud you for being brave yes. uh, in, in what it is that you do and yeah. stepping out when it comes mm -hmm. to your talent and passion yeah. uh, at such a young age because right. I wish I would have discovered my passion right. uh, younger. But you know what? When it hits you, it hits you. That's right. And mm -hmm. the most important thing is that you're following that, that dream. dream. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. it's And all you're about. good at it. And yes. you're great at Very it. Good. You know? mm -hmm. Like I tell people sometimes, I may have wanted to be a fashion model, but I'm too short. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a realistic <laughs> exactly. dream. Right. Yeah. So right. as long as your dreams are realistic, I take this year, everybody, we want your dreams to take wings. Yes. Exactly. And let's let's try to do okay. whatever we can do and Short move forward. forward. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Now, I worked with LSU Ag Center, mm -hmm. and they had a uh, 4-H um, uh, program, and it was phenomenal. I don't know if you all had that in your parish. We do. Yeah. But yeah. one of the things that I they found with the that, program. They yes. still yes. have the 4-H program. They still have the 4-H program. And it's I mean, an you were, you're in the 4-H program? Uh -huh. yeah. And, and it's a, because it, it deals with leadership, uh -huh. citizenship. Right, I was in 4-H. Teammate. You probably, all of us I were was. in 4-H. Uh, exactly. You were, <laughs> were you exactly. in 4-H? No, yes, no. and, and yeah. I loved it. And yeah. so it's those kinds of things that where you have young people stepping up in leadership roles, and right. I love that. Yeah. But then also we went into the schools and we did nutrition programs. Yeah. And uh, we talked about the importance of young people uh, eating properly. 
Now, what kind of, at the school you are, that where you work at in Gretna, what, what do they and, do? Um, what, what, what kind Generate of things Louisiana, is they, Generate is the way it is. The okay. only club that they have for that school is 4-H. Ah, that's it. That's it. And what that's kind of what I'm do they have? That, there's nothing. That's, that's why we, I started this program, because mm -hmm. there's nothing for them to do. Really. I, I mean, not just arts, but other kinds of um, programs like nutrition and teaching them things nothing. like that. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. That I know of. Did y'all know of any programs besides 4-H mm -hmm. and Beta? Uh, I mean, all I know is 4-H and that's the school. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what? Let me say this right here. That's not uncommon for rural areas. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you get more in the cities. Exactly. It's if you sad. ever need someone to come speak to the kids on motivation, okay. on following your dreams, or on time management, management, marketing, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I, I was exactly. with IBM at first. So exactly. I, I had a lot exactly. of background. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Rural areas, you don't have as many programs. Right. We're talking right. about programs. Right. I'd be more than right. willing to come if you yes. need me to come that, to the Westgate. That would be really, really great because yeah. a lot of times they lack those kinds of programs right. which are really, really needed. And they don't see the role models. Right. You don't see what you can be. That's one reason we do this show. There you go. Um. So you would, what, what program is not successful that you've seen in, in helping with kids? I don't think foster care is that successful. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, and you know what? I think that in every system, uh, Diane, you have failures mm -hmm. and you have success. Mm -hmm. I have to say with the program, the, the children that I worked with when I was a part of CASA, um, were, one was adopted into mm -hmm. a, the foster parent adopted the they, little boy. He did get it through. He did yes, get the adoption it through. Yes, uh, uh, they did. They adopted the little boy. Uh, his name was Cameron. And the amazing part about it was that he, he, he was always in the home of the, the foster parent from birth. Really? Yes, from birth. How, how old was he when they adopted when him? When they adopted him, he was about three years old four years old, mm -hmm. somewhere within that age range, okay, and he had always been there. Was this in them. Baton Rouge? This was in Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. yes. And then I remember another case where the child was put back in the home with the parent. And so um, I think every program, you often have those those times where the, the system fails right. or the program fails, right. but then you also have those successes. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things I have to say with when I worked with CASA was that I had an opportunity firsthand to see how individuals like myself mm -hmm. would go in and work very, very hard in order to try and find out what was best for the child. Well, I, I want to do a show on foster care because, and, and I agree, mm -hmm. in life, success, failure, but you have to look at the overall magnitude of the impact right. of the program. What I've heard, and this could be wrong, but from foster parents, that um, uh, in the foster care system, sometimes a lot of them are put in bad homes, and a lot of that people may true. have yeah. four, three, four, five children. It's just about that the money. True. They get paid exactly to, uh, to take in a foster. Do you know how much? They get, they, they, get paid? True, they get paid a tremendous amount yeah, of money. And that's let me what just, I heard. Right? And let me just say this right here. Um, and, and I've often been fighting against that because yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm riding two, I'm wearing two hats here. Right. I'm also uh, uh, on the board for grandparents raising grandchildren. Right. Louisiana yeah. is third in the nation with the number of grandparents who are raising their grandchildren. Wow. Now, the state feels that grandparents shouldn't get any funds for raising their grandchildren. Wow. They feel that wow. you just should do that just right. because. You're related. You're related. But then you, but you pay foster care. Right. Exactly. It doesn't really love the kid at first. Exactly. A lot of them. I won't say all of them. Exactly. And that's why I'm going to invite foster care on my next uh, there you go. Kid, uh, there you go. All About Kids show. There you go. Right. But and I would love to be a part of that because I, I speak up for the voices of the grandparents, right. which I feel is so unfair that they get only a fraction of funds and you have foster parents they, give them they get they, they give do them give them something, something. Mm -hmm. about three hundred and maybe sixty five dollars wow. or three hundred and forty dollars mm -hmm. maybe. But and the, what does a foster care a foster give? parent can get somewhere in the neighborhood of five or six hundred dollars, wow. if not seven hundred dollars a month. So double based double on the plus. child. Uh -huh. And if you have a child that's disabled that goes to maybe seven to eight hundred dollars. Well, but it should if they're disabled. And it's a lot true. more you have right. to do. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's and much more that of. comes into it. Right. 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 Sitters and. And so there's, but then they also get rest uh, uh, money for it to uh, uh, provide for themselves to go away to retreats. Yeah. Where they can kind of get away from what's going on within their home. There's a lot of and perks. Do, is there a limit of how many children? I, I know one lady, she had like three or four foster children. They can children. have more than that, yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know what the limit is, but there is a limit. It should be. But it is a tremendous amount of money that they yeah, can so receive. Yeah, so if you got like four kids and you're getting $700, that's $2,800 a that's month. That's right. Wow. That's right. That's yeah. right. And then, and then you look that's at maybe like And the person that I happen to know, I know was doing it for the money, not and, out of and the business exactly. or the love for that's the children. And you do have you do have that. Well, mm -hmm. that and that's why, as a CASA uh, uh, advocate, they don't that's where we go into the home. Let me ask home. you this. Okay, in between foster homes, where do they go? Where do, they, where do the children stay? 
you know, if there's not one home to go to a, a, a resident home, do they go back to some adoption agency or do they go? No, you have a number of, there's a large number of individuals who have put their homes uh, as being foster places. Right, so I know, child but, but say, let me, I'm just, a, I'm a foster kid mm -hmm. and right now nobody wants me or I have nowhere to go. Do they have like agencies? Where do these children stay in between? No, that's a, that's a that's good a question. question. I, that, uh, because, you know, I've all the time you may not have a home to go to, so well, where do they go? They well, and you know home. what, the, everywhere I've heard, I've heard of individuals going in taking kids and then once they take them uh they bring them into a foster home yeah. you are on call i think well, we'll find that out yeah, on the we show yeah that we I definitely do have to for do that. all about kids wow. right exactly i want to get you all's perspective how have you enjoyed being on the show caitlin i love it, <laughs> I, love it. <laughs> this is, I don't even need to ask you right <laughs> but you can express it <laughs> Speechless. He's speechless. He's speechless. He's speechless. He's speechless. He's speechless. The first time in his life he's speechless. He's a like, performer. He really is, I know. Performer. I do, um, when the Katrina kids were here, I did an art contest for them. And this is some of the work oh, that they so did. Funny. And I do a motivational calendar. I do motivational speaking. This is the mm -hmm. calendar I do every year. This is my 2016 yeah. calendar. And these are, this is some artwork that the kids did. Beautiful. As you see, this lady is crying. Oh God, I asked them, so the ones that went Baton Rouge, Beautiful. and I gave them a big uh, event wow. at the Camelot Club where they got to dress and their exactly. parents came back in. Uh, 2016, yes, 22006. <laughs> uh, but this is just showing the children, you know, standing outside the dome. Some children I had in this program were uh, in the dome, and the things they saw were horrific. Yes. Now, this lady was the winner. Now, this is, uh, is a nice. representation of, oh, can you imagine? It was a big, yeah, it's, really beautiful. Right. it's beautiful. She has all the detail oh, from the it. Time magazine article. Wow. And she was amazing. Sasha. Uh, Winchester was her name. In fact, wow. I talked to her recently. Amazing. So I'm going to give each one of you, and the people in the audience also oh, get this calendar mm -hmm. to take home. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. You all can get some more out there, okay. but uh, <laughs> I appreciate you all being here and thank focus you, on what, what's, what did I use it? Focus on what? What did I say? Focus on what is to be, not what has been. Yeah, yeah. That's a good thing starting off the year. Let's focus on the things we're going to change to make the things better. Uh, I always. If I have time, and I have a little time today, in the show, lighting a candle. If I can find my candle down. <laughs> <laughs> this was based on a show that I saw as a little girl growing up in Marouge, Louisiana. How my Marouge folks, I saw quite a few people when I was on season's break from my little hometown. And they watched the show. This show, uh, showed a person lighting a candle and what it said if everyone lit just one little candle one white candle what a bright world this would be and i've tried to live my life by burning white candles mm -hmm. and all that means is looking for your light and trying to find light in other people and trying to make yourself better number one as michael jackson said always look in the mirror and uh, see what you can do to be better and how you can make this world a better place with all the confusion, that's what we need today. Bye-bye. See you later with Diane Andrews. And <laughs>